Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church in my church office in Louisville, Kentucky, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments on a daily basis with the master looking at the word of God. And uh, this week, our focus is on the eyes of faith overcoming spiritual blindness. Jesus said that the eyes are the window into the body, which means your eyes uh, what you see in life determines your personality, what you get in life, what you pursue in life. It all depends on what you see. And so many wonderful opportunities are there for us, are there for us in life. But we have a sense of spiritual blindness. God wants us to overcome that spiritual blindness and God will help us overcome spiritual blindness, spiritual myopia. Now, listen. Um, one of the contributions that God brings to a person's life, believing in God, believing, really believing authentically, I'm not talking about superficial faith, but authentic faith helps to expand our vision, helps to expand our vision. Many of the things that we think we see were always there. We just had to discover them. Most of those, by the way, the discoveries in the world are not something that people just created. It was something that was already there and then they figured it out or they saw it. For example, we could have been flying airplanes uh, during the day of Moses. Yeah, because all of the factors that make flight necessary existed. Um, the air, the lift, everything that a plane needs to fly, that existed back in the day of Moses. So all the Wright brothers did was to discover what was already there. And God often wants us to discover what is already there. And you know that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is working with you when your mind and your vision is expanding. There's a wonderful story in the Gospel of Mark about a man who had an expanding vision, but God had to work with him. Christ had to work with him and he had to touch him. He touched him three times. And these three touches um, that helped a blind man to see are the three touches that help us to expand our vision. The story is found in Mark chapter 8, verse 22 through 26. Let's look at it. Let's uh, look at the text and then we'll explain what it means. It says, they arrived at Bethsaida. Some people brought a sightless man and begged Jesus to give him a healing touch. Taking him by the hand, he, laid, he led him out of the village. He put spit in the man's eyes, laid hands on him and asked, do you see anything? He looked up. I see men. They look like walking trees. So Jesus laid hands on his eyes again. The man looked hard and realized that he had received, he had recovered perfect sight. So everything in bright 2020 focus. Jesus sent him straight home, telling him, don't enter the village. Amen. Now, now what this, what is this story talking about? We'll just stop at verse 26. Okay. What is this story he's talking about? It, it, I want you to notice that, um, first of all, the man is blind, but he was not like the man in John chapter 9 who was born blind. This man uh, at one time could see, uh, but for some reason he contracted some eye disease that robbed him of his vision. And um, we know he could see uh, because when he... Christ started working with him to restore his vision. And Jesus asked him, what did he see? He said, I see men walking as trees. So he already knew uh, before his eyes was open, he already was cognizant of the fact that that's a man and that's a tree. He could distinguish between the two. And if he had been born blind, someone would have to tell him no, that's a tree and that's a man. He already knew it. So Jesus restored his, this is a restoration of sight. In fact, verse 25 seems to indicate that also, that this man was not born blind, but he had his sight restored. Verse 25 reads, so Jesus laid hands on his eyes again. The man looked hard, realized that he had recovered perfect 
sight. So this was a recovering of sight. This was a restoration of sight. This was not the establishment of new sight. And what I want you to see is that it was a process. It was a process. He has an ever expanding vision and God wants you to have an ever expanding vision, but it took three touches. And these three touches are critical uh, for your vision expanding. God wants your vision to expand. Well, let's look at the first touch. The first touch, and these are three C words, is the touch of conviction. The touch of conviction. The man uh, did not had to have some new convictions if he's going to see uh, all that God had for him in his life. And sometimes we have to have new convictions. What makes you a new person? It's not your clothes and not your house, not your job, not your car. Those are the consequences of newness. What makes you new is your convictions, what you believe. And Jesus is going to touch him the first time. And the first touch is the touch of conviction. You see that in verse 22. Look at verse 22. It says, the man, they arrived at Bethsaida. Some people brought a sightless man and begged Jesus to give him a healing touch. Verse 23 says, Verse 23 says, taking him by the hand, he led him. That's the first touch. The first touch had to do with convictions. Jesus grabbed him by the hand. He didn't grab Jesus because he couldn't see Jesus' hand. So Jesus grabbed him by the hand and guess what? Led him outside of the village, which means what did Jesus do? Jesus separated him from his old friends. Jesus separated him from the crowd. Jesus separated him from his old friends. Listen, um, if your vision is going to be expanded, some people you got to get away from. Some people you got to get away from. And it's the very people who brought him to Jesus. But somehow Jesus saw in the people that this man was associating with uh, an impediment to this man having an expanded vision. And uh, our convictions, to some degree, is based on the people that we associate with. Amen. So Jesus separated him from the crowd to deal with him as an individual. And Jesus wants to talk to you as an individual. So the first touch is the touch of conviction. Let's look at the second touch. If the first touch was the touch of con conviction, the second touch is the touch of conversion conversion. Look at verse 23 again. <clears throat> verse 23 reads, taking him by the hand, he led him out of the village. That's the first touch when he uh, took him away from the negative people. And then it says, he put spit in the man's eyes, laid, laid hands on him and asked, do you see anything? They put spit in his eyes. Why did he put spit in his eyes? Well, if you touch something hot, what's your first instinct? Your first instinct is to put your finger in your mouth uh, and cool it down. And that's just an instinct uh, because the ancients believed, the ancient people in the day of Jesus believed that there was healing in saliva, in saliva. And so Jesus put saliva on his eyes, touched his eyes, and he is able to see. He's, Jesus asked him, do you see anything? And notice what he says in verse 24. In verse 24, he says, he looked up, I see men, but they look like walking trees. Stop here. Stop here. I see men, but they look like walking trees. Which means that even though Christ has converted him because he can see, he's not perfect. If he sees men walking around his trees, that means even though Christ has had something to do with his life, he's not perfect. And, and just because Christ has had something to do with your life, you already know that you're not perfect. You don't always see things the way you should see things. And we have to applaud the man for doing one thing that we must do if we want to get blessed by God. He was honest. When Jesus asked him, when did you see? He didn't lie and say, you know, I can see everything good. I've got it all together. No, he said, Lord, I don't have it together. I don't see things clearly. I see men 
walking around as trees. And you know what? Because he's not seeing people right, uh, that means his conversion is to some degree incomplete. Because one of the ways that you know your conversion is complete is the way you see people. If he sees people walking around the trees as trees, that means he sees people as objects and things. And if you've been converted and you see people as objects and things to be exploited and be used, then you're not seeing right. You need, a, you need another touch. Uh, and then if you see people walking around in trees, well, what are trees? Tree? Tree, some trees are just stumps, stumps. And um, a whole lot of people, you allow people to stump you, trip you up. Somebody's done something, said something about you many years ago, and you just can't get over it. They're stumping you. That means you see people walking around the streets because you see some human stumps. And then here's something else. Um, trees have leaves, leaves. And uh, sometimes you, pick, you wish that um, certain people, because maybe of their race, that they would just leave. And if that's the way you are, then you see people walking around the trees and you're not, you're not healthy. You need a second touch. And then what do we do with trees? We cut trees down. And sometimes when we see people walking around the trees, we love to cut people down with gossip, uh, with satire, with innuendo, signifying, uh, cutting people down because you see people walking around the trees. And you know what? Trees are always bigger. In most instances, trees are bigger than human beings. And if God opens your eyes and you see everybody's being bigger than you, better than you, more capable than you, able than you, more able than you, that means you're seeing people walking around the trees. And although you're converted, your conversion is not complete. So go back to the story. Look at verse 23 again. In verse 23, we are told, taking him by the hand, he led him out of the village. He put spit in the man's eyes, laid uh, hands on him and asked, do you see anything? He looked up, I see men, they look like walking trees. So Jesus laid hands on his eyes again, which is the third touch. Remember what the first touch was? The first touch was the touch of conviction. Jesus had to move him away from negative people. And they were, there was a lot of negative people in that particular city that they were in, Bethphage. In fact, we're even told how negative they were. Remember Luke, look at Luke chapter 10, verse 13, very quickly. I just want to di digress just a little bit. Luke 10, verse 13 says, uh, but what, what sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did in you had been done in the wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago. So Jesus pronounces condemnation on two cities because of their negativity to receive truth. One was Chorazin and the other was where this miracle is taking place, Bethsaida. So if you go back to the first touch, the first touch was a touch of conviction in which Jesus is separating him from negative people. And the second touch was a touch of conversion in which Jesus spit in his eyes and touched his eyes and he could see he was converted, but he was not perfect. And we're converted and we're not perfect. So after Jesus was told by the man that uh, I see men walking around in trees, Jesus gave him a third touch. And if the first touch was the touch of conviction, let me separate you from negative people. And the second touch was the church of conversion. Let me get you started, even though you're not perfect. The third touch is the touch of correction. Conviction, conversion, correction. Because look, if you will, at verse 24 again. Verse 24 <laughs> reads, he looked up, I see men, they look like walking trees. Verse 25, so Jesus laid hands on him again to correct him. The man looked hard and realized that he had recovered perfect sight. And notice the man did his part because God never does anything for us without our participation. 
the man looked hard and realized that he had recovered perfect sight. So I saw everything in bright 2020 focus. Amen. So he's got correction. Verse 26 says, Jesus sent him straight home, telling him, don't enter the village. Why well, do think Jesus told him to go home and don't go back to the village? Because once Jesus got him some conviction away from the people and got him some conversion, though he's on the path, all he's, although he's not perfect, he can still see, although it's not perfect. And after correction, where he's got 20-20 vision, Jesus does not want him to relapse. So once he separated himself from the people, Jesus says, don't go back. And once Jesus separates you from some people who are impeding your vision, Jesus says, don't go back. What do you notice about this thing? What do you notice about this story? This is what you should notice. That this man had three touches, a touch of conviction, moving away from negative people, a touch of conversion. You're, you're on the path, even though you're not perfect. A touch of correction in which I want to keep improving you. The third touch is a touch that we must constantly seek. That third touch. Jesus touched him again. And we want Jesus to touch our eyes again and again and again and again so that we can see more clearly what God has for us. You know, when you pray the next time, instead of asking God to give you something that probably God has already sent, maybe you need to ask God to open up your eyes and give you a, another touch so that you can see what is already there so that you can overcome your spiritual blindness. And it didn't happen instantly. Many times we think change takes place just like that instantly. This man's conversion was gradual. It went from conviction, getting away from the negative people, correction, getting started. I mean, excuse me, conversion, getting started, and then correction, getting perfected. And God wants us to continue to overcome spiritual blindness by saying, God, I think I need another touch. Help me to see what you're up to. Help me to see what you're doing. Help me to see where I need to go from here. And guess what? You have not because you ask not. God wants you to experience true, true 2020 vision. My God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people. And if we need a second touch, a third touch, a fourth touch, a 50th touch, whatever the touch is, please do it for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me today for another powerful point to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to invite you to become a digital, digital disciple here at St. Stephen Baptist Church. Email us, newstart at ssclive.com. Dot org. We will get back with you. Peace and blessings. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. I hope you have a blessed day the rest of the day. And remember, during COVID-19, we're still in the midst of COVID-19. Please get your shot. Get your shot. Amen. Uh, but in the midst of COVID-19, stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is in control. Take care. Be blessed. I'll see you tomorrow.